Welcome to the special edition of the Fan Counter Celebrity Podcast. My name's Nick. Thank you so much for joining us today. Over the last couple of months, Brian Nelson Jr., who runs the new Leave It to Beaver Facebook group, has been with me reuniting the cast of that show on our podcast. We started our journey with Jerry Mathers. We interviewed Tony Dow and Janice Kent. We talked to the kids. They're not kids anymore, but Kip Marcus and Kalina Kiff were here. We had the writer, Cindy Begel, the composer, David Michael Frank, on the show, as well as the creator and executive producer, Brian Levant. Everyone came on the show to share their memories of working on the new Leave it to Beaver. And on Friday, June 12th, we're welcoming the sons of the late Ken Osmond to the show to share their memories of working on set and living with their dad, a legend known for the role of Eddie Haskell. Sadly, Ken Osmond passed away yesterday. I want to thank Sandy Osmond, Ken's wife, for corresponding with me back and forth as we are trying to get an interview together to kind of complete our circle of this new Leave to Beaver reunion. And unfortunately, the timing wasn't right and it didn't happen. But we have the next best thing, thanks to our friend Scott Hetrick. Scott's really active in the Facebook group. In fact, he's been digitizing the new Leave to Beaver from his beta tapes and uploading them to YouTube so the series can be enjoyed by a whole new generation of people. Very thankful that he's doing that because he's also bringing back a lot of good memories watching that show. Back in September of 2019, Scott had an interview with Ken Osmond, probably one of the last interviews Ken ever did. And Scott has allowed Fan Counters exclusive access to this interview and permission to air it so that you can hear Ken, in his words, talk about the series. As I said, it's probably one of his last interviews he ever did, and we are very honored that Scott Hetrick has allowed us to play it for you today. So, without further ado, here is that interview with Scott Hetrick and Ken Osmond, in memory of Ken, who passed away yesterday. These things haven't been seen for 25 years, so I've been slowly transferring the Betamax tapes to YouTube and putting them up on there just so I can get rid of my Betamax tapes, but also so other people can see them. And it turns out there's like tens of thousands of people that are just loving these things, and it's almost like rediscovering the whole <laughs> the whole series. Well, it's not the original show, but it is still pretty damn good. Did you like the series when you first started to do the series on the Disney Channel? Oh, absolutely, yeah. We had so many of even the uh, the old crew members there, and it just felt like home. So it seemed like you had all the old Eddie Haskell personality, but you also had a lot more focus of your story and some softer sides too. Well, I, I was I was more of an adult then too, and I I understood more what was going on around me. Right. Did you have any input on that at all? We had more input uh, on the new show than. And on the original, the original was very, very carefully scripted. We had more leeway on uh, on the new show. Whose idea was it to cast your sons, first Eric and then Christian joined later? Actually, it was not a shoe-in, which you would easily think. Eric actually went to the uh, cattle call type interview. Of course, I, I had coached him. And so he had the, the Eddie tackle down, and he had an advantage there. But he did have to stand up against a lot of competition to get the part. That's interesting. And I was going to ask you that Eddie or Haskell cackle, was that something that uh, he had grown up with or was familiar with and, and did around the house? Or was that something he had to practice for the new show? He, he definitely took direction from me to get it down and he practiced it around the house and such. You know, I went into that actually pretty much in detail. The book that I wrote, and I believe you read it. Yes, of course. I saw the, the video online of your book signing you did where Eric and Christian showed up there. Can you and your son still do the Haskell laugh? I was gonna get him to do that. Yeah, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on Eric. <laughs> Christian too. <laughs> <laughs> was there anything unique for you as an actor working on still the beaver as an adult rather than a child was there anything different interacting with the other actors like barbara billingsley as an adult now instead of a kid you know i never thought of it uh, as working as an actor it just uh, it was there it was a job and i did my best to, to do it 
Did you specifically try to bring anything different to the character uh, as an adult, or did you try to pretty much play him as the same personality he had as a kid? Well, hopefully uh, the latter is true. Do you remember any of the specific Eddie put-downs or sarcastic lines that you really enjoyed? Well, Eddie, as an adult, used a lot of the uh, put-downs that he did as, as a child. Right, that's true. Call, had a name for everybody, called everybody, uh, you know, Gertrude or, or some, some sort of... Yeah, or squirt. <laughs> squirt, yeah, that's right. I noticed in one episode, the Still the Beaver episode in the first season, I just literally laughed out loud as I was recording it, where your son, uh, Freddie, Eric, was going out on a date. I think it was his first date. And you sat down and wanted to give him some fatherly advice. Well, that, that's, from, that's from the movie. You did it in the movie as well. I was going to ask you about that. Almost the exact same line. <laughs> with the other actors. Oh, that was horrible. That was a piece of trash. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Why do you say that about the uh, movie? I don't know. It, it just... I didn't care for the movie itself, actually. If you were to, as Eddie Haskell, give a, a brief description of each of the main characters, like now, what would you say about Beaver? He's a squirt. <laughs> <laughs> And what about Wally? Well, Wally's kind of a neat guy. Okay. What would you? What would Eddie Haskell say describing June? June Cleaver. Barbara was such a, an absolute sweetheart. If I described her with one word, it would be gracious. That's fair. Yeah, I, I love Barbara. She was really a love. What did you think of the the kids on the show when you were doing Still the Beaver and the New Leave It to Beaver? What did you think of? Uh, the, the kid actors as actors obviously your sons they were really quite good yeah they, they did their job very well did you see yourself in any of them as you know when you were a kid doing acting any things that they they did or any advice you could impart to them working on a very similar show probably the hardest part for me was uh keeping my nose out of it i'm not a director and i let the directors do their job and I, and I had to kind of fight my own paternal instincts and, and not jump in the middle of it. I, I think I did it all right. What was that like when you had to move down to Florida? I don't know if you, I guess you did move temporarily down to Florida to, to shoot. Yeah, we lived uh, half a year down there. It was a, a neat time, uh, probably more for uh, for my older son than, than me. I mean, they, they gave us a car and our apartment and we got per diem i mean who could ask for more oh no i loved it down there i wondered when it got to the end where was that okay with you had your fill and ready to to be done with the show down there or would you have kept going no i, I would have would have loved another season they're bringing back all these old shows again. I wondered uh, if somebody said we want to, you know, do another version of, of Beaver and have you guys be grandfathers. What would you think of that? I'm at a stage of life now. I'm retired. Nah, I'm, I'm tired. My, my first film work was in 1949, and I spent enough years in it, and I'm fired. I'm, I'm ready to kick back and, and have me a cold one. What's... Can Osmond do for fun? What's a, what do you do in your free time? How do you enjoy your days? My sons and I have been building an airplane for oh god for oh, ten years anyway, and it is real close to flying. It's a Sky Star, a two-place tail dragger. And we have a Subaru engine in it. Wow! So are you a pilot? Do you fly? Back in the mid '50s, I. I flew the helicopters. I, I've never gone out for a fixed wing license. You live in the LA area somewhere? Suburb of LA, yeah. Was a that... rural area. Eric is an editor and Christian is a, is a vet a surgeon. Correct. And they got kids now? Are you a grandfather? I got two grandsons from Eric, the older. You stay in touch with any of the other actors you used to work with on the, on the Beaver shows? Yeah, yeah, but uh, not real often, but Frank, Frank Bank, Lumpy, and uh, and I got pretty close uh, before he passed away. I saw him pretty regularly. I hope you get better with the, the nerve things in your legs. Oh, I will. I have to. Now I'm not walking. I got a 
little electric scooter that I run around the house with. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll get over. I'll get over it. Well, if you don't mind me asking, how old are you? You're in your seventies, right? That's a stress question. <laughs> uh, Seventy-six. Well, you still got a lot of good years left. I know you'll get you'll get feeling better. I hope it's not too painful in the meantime. Well, it is somewhat. Uh oh. I'll make it. You can plug my book for me. It's available on Amazon. Okay, I will definitely plug it. Alrighty, Scott. All right, take care. Goodbye. My thanks to Scott Hetrick for allowing us to air that interview here on the Fan Counter Celebrity Podcast. Now, in another interview that was done many, many years earlier, it was pointed out that Ken didn't do a lot of acting since Leave it to Beaver ended back in 1963. And this is what Ken had to say about that. Basically, I was typecast. Uh, after Beaver uh, went into syndication, every time I'd walk into a casting office, all I could see was Eddie. And that's a death sentence in Hollywood. In this next clip, Ken talks about what it's like to be Eddie Haskell. Eddie has been so good to me for almost 50 years now. Uh, has opened doors and I've, I've got to go places and see things and meet people that, uh, you know, it's just uh, unimaginable. After Ken gave up on acting, or the business gave up on him, he did end up becoming an L.A. police officer. I did. In 1970, I became an officer. In this next clip, he talks about whether or not the officers he served beside knew they were serving right alongside Eddie Haskell. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, they knew, and I got constant ribbing from them. Ken was even shot in the line of duty. I was shot three times by a, by a car thief, and he'd run around a corner, and using very bad tactics on my part, I assumed that he'd continued running when in fact he'd stopped and waited for me, and so we were toe-to-toe, -to -toe and uh, he fired three times. The upper two uh, rounds uh, struck my vest, and the uh, bottom one went under the vest, uh, but Believe it or not, the upper one in the chest did the most damage. And in true fan counter style, Ken talks about what it's like to meet his fans. I am a friend everywhere. It is so neat. I can go to a large metropolis someplace on the East Coast or a small Midwestern town, and they treat me like a long-lost relative. It's so neat. It's wonderful. The world is better because Ken Osmond lived in it. He entertained us for over 60 years the amount of laughs we all had because of his character, Eddie Haskell, will go down in history. In fact, he'll be talked about for 60 more years, I'm sure. My prayers, my thoughts, they go out to Eric and Christian, who were on our show a couple weeks ago, that episode airing on June the 12th, and praying for Sandy and the entire Osmond family as they mourn the loss of their father, Ken Osmond, who passed away yesterday, May 18th, 2020.